Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be looking at someone who ruined their life in a day. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. My dad used a dirty needle while doing drugs and got HIV. In 2008, he told us he was living with AIDS because of that one day. We have helped pay for the meds and his bills because he paid for his meds and didn't have the money ever since. Last summer, he got COVID and when the doctor was talking to my sister on the phone, she asked what special treatment he would need to have due to having AIDS. His doctor of 20 years said, what, he doesn't have AIDS. We haven't talked to him since. At the time, he said he had been living with HIV for years and that it developed into AIDS for not treating it. He gave permission to the doctor to speak to my sister about his medical treatment. No laws broken. The doctor clarified it wasn't a two minute conversation. He had been seeing my dad as a patient for 20 years and knew his medical history. He was as upset as us that we were lied to. After finding out, me and my sister confronted him and he admitted it all. He never had HIV or AIDS. It was a lie. Wow, so he just wanted the money for his addiction or something. How dare you lie to your kids about something so serious just because you want money? I would go no contact after this. Hell no. He got drunk, got in his car, drove 90 miles per hour, missed a red light and killed my niece and three other people. He's been in prison since 2009 and still has six years to go as he plead out to four counts of manslaughter. Dang. This is why you just shouldn't be dumb, you know? Don't drive when you're drunk and don't go 90 miles per hour. What in the world? I was a teacher and coach. For a field trip, the principal could not afford two buses. So I had to walk about 10 girls to the field trip location and back to school while the one bus was filled with the rest of the junior high students and faculty. About a mile each way, I chose the girls of my team because they will listen to me outdoors, unlike lots of middle school kids. While crossing the street in the crosswalk, with the walk signal on our favour, all the kids went first, and like girls, they clumped together and chatting while walking. I noticed a woman made a left turn into our crosswalk and never saw us as she tried to accelerate to beat an oncoming car. I knew she was going to run right through the girls. I pushed the kids forward very forcefully. Most of the girls fell onto the pavement in front of the other vehicles, waiting at the red light. They were badly scraped up, like road rash from me pushing them but no hospitals or doctors were needed for their scrapes. I don't remember the impact. I remember seeing a symbol between the headlights. I came to and I was in a whole different lane and facing where I had just come from, I could not get up. They say my body went up the car and off the driver's side, tearing the side mirror off the car and breaking her windshield. Horror and sobbing from my student athletes. The girls raised me onto a backboard when the ambulance came, which must have been traumatic. Now, 20 years later, I'm a wheelchair user. Can't teach or coach. Can't work at a desk. I have chronic pain. Yes, my life can be really sucky, but I will not change what I did that day. When I get low emotionally from all my limitations, I remember those girls. I watched them go to college, get married, grow into mothers and hold impressive jobs in their field. And when they show a photo on Facebook of the happy moment, it recharges me to know they are safe, healthy and happy. And it reaffirms my decision to save them from harm. Man... They're amazing, this teacher. I feel like a lot of teachers would do the same thing because their students are just important to them. And it's just an instinct thing too. When you see someone else in danger, you just want to warn them and you don't think about yourself. <sighs> what a freaking hero. Man, I do feel really bad though that they can't do what they like to do anymore. But they saved so many people's lives and the girls will be forever grateful <sighs> guy i knew in uni was drunk and decided to try and clear a very tall spiked iron fence he impaled his balls and did not get to keep them jeez i knew those tall spiked fences were dangerous come on man why would you things drunk people do. A friend of my parents was a good family man who loved his family. One day he was playing with his toddler and was playfully tossing her on the bed. She would get back up giggling and he would toss her again. In one of the tosses he threw her a bit too far and she hit a bed post. She lived but became bedbound, unable to even talk. Not quite vegetable but close. He went to jail on child abuse. Lost his wife, his job and his little girl would never be the same. The guilt was so much that he ended it as soon as he could. <gasps> Dude, that's so sad. The fact that it was just an accident and they were just being happy and then 
everything just changed in one second. Whoa. That's really freaking sad. I didn't know you would go to jail for like an accident like this. Man, I just feel bad for the dad because I feel like this could happen to like any parent, right? Like we were all tossed as a kid, right? <laughs> Honestly, like our parents always throw us on the bed. We would always go back to them to get tossed again or throw us in the pool, you know? I would always do that. I love being thrown in the pool. Guys got drunk in high school, drove off the highway, didn't make the turn at 90 miles per hour, five dead. This is the dumbest thing, honestly. A buddy from high school blew through a stop sign and hit a couple of motorcyclists, killing them both. He didn't stop to render aid and fled the scene. He was busted for vehicular manslaughter and spent 12 plus years in prison. He's lucky he can work for his dad because where he lives now is not kind to felons trying to rehabilitate. Dang. The fact that he didn't even stop and call an ambulance, he just ran away after hitting two people. A week ago, my little sister slipped on the ice getting out of her car and hit her head. She didn't think much of it when she had a pounding headache later, figuring she just whacked herself good. Her friend told her to just sit down and take it easy until she started slurring her words roughly 10 hours after the fall. They called an ambulance for her, but she was going into cardiac arrest. Turns out she stopped taking her blood thinners she was supposed to be on clotting issues. The headache wasn't the fall. It was the clot in her leg cutting off blood to the brain. At the age of 26, she never recovered and leaves behind a four-year-old and a two-year-old. <gasps> oh my gosh. Wow. So it was like the coincidence of it all. It wasn't a headache because she fell on ice, but it was the headache because blood couldn't get to her brain. And she didn't know because it was just a coincidence that she hit her head. So she thought it was because she hit her head. Yo, that's scary. My friend's wife was diagnosed with cancer. The doctor said she has about 10% chance of surviving. She scheduled her surgery for a month out and without telling him, took out several credit cards in just her name. She racked up $100,000 in debt in that month flying around the world and doing everything on her bucket list. She had the surgery and chemo after and lived. She was fine. That debt completely screwed up their lives for about 10 years. Oh, well, you know what? I'm glad she's fine. Because money, you can always make it again, but someone's life, you can't take back. I mean, we know tons of people who are in a lot of debt, okay? <laughs> like houses and everything, they're in like million dollars of debt. So I think for this one, they just needed to plan something out. Because hey, I'm pretty sure if you could choose, hey, if I pay you 100K, can I live? they would pay the 100k. Kid down the street had his best friend over and his friend being 12 to 13 year old boy was being a jerk. Kid picks up a shotgun his brother left lying around in the dining room and named it his friend. Friend taunted him. Kid pulled the trigger. Two families instantly devastated. Kid went to jail. I occasionally see the friend when I go out for a walk. He's a grown up now. He's intellectually maybe four to five years old and will be taken care of by his family for the rest of his life. Yes, the friend lived. This is why you don't be dumb. You never point a gun at someone. And why does the kid even have a gun? Where did he find the freaking gun? Oh, in the dining room. Who the frick leaves a gun in the dining room when you have kids? Are you stupid? You are irresponsible, dude. In college, my ex's friend was pulled over for speeding. He had drugs and alcohol in his system and when the cop reached in his truck to grab the keys, he panicked and took off, thinking the cop would let go. The cop did not let go and was dragged for quite a ways before eventually falling to the ground and hitting his head, resulting in his death. My ex's friend was charged with capital murder and sentenced to 20 years in Mississippi State Prison. 21 years old and ruined his entire life in one night. Seriously, you would rather kill somebody than to get arrested. It's crazy how one person's little decision just ends everything for them. Friend's son was with his recently engaged fiance who had a serious nut allergy. They stopped off at a cafe to buy sandwiches. The woman running the cafe assured them there were no nuts anywhere near the sandwiches, so they bought them and then went on their way. Driving out away from town, she was nibbling on the sandwiches when she struggled to breathe. He stopped the car, got out, figured what was going on, went to the back of the car to get an EpiPen, which he struggled to find. But by the time he did find it, she was dead. I hope that cafe gets sued because they were like, no nuts, no nuts are near this, just buy it. 
And what happened? There were nuts in the sandwiches. Are they freaking dumb? Do they not know what's in their own sandwiches? They could have had the best life together. If you're like allergic to things, make sure that it is easy to find your EpiPen. It's just crazy to me because basically if you're eating out, you have to trust other people. Whether you're going to die or not. Right? Like, she trusted this cafe that said there were no nuts and she lost her life. How scary is that? Well, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.